Well, hello, it's Nick Saltarelli, and I've just completed the crash roll installation on my uh, Jaguar XK120 Roadster. And uh, this is it here. It came out quite well, but it's, uh, it's an involved process, and I think pretty easy to screw up. So what I've done is i put together a bunch of video here to show the process as I went through it, and hopefully it'll be of some benefit. This is the original driver's door crash roll for this uh, XK120 Roadster. It was removed by a previous owner after the car was stored in the barn for about 30 years. You can see where the mice had chewed through in places. Now I've reconstructed it to figure out uh, its configuration, how it was put together and applied to the door. A couple of observations here, as you can see that the uh, the top of the D-roll has a layer of canvas glued to it. Also, you can see the treatment here of the uh, of the beading at the front, where the uh, the underside of the of the beading is trimmed here, trimmed across, to uh, allow the beadwork to sit on the end of the uh, of the D-roll there. The key thing here is that if you look carefully, you can see that the beading and the underside of the leather cover are tacked to the underside of this thin strip of Baltic birch. And then the, uh, the three pieces, the, the wood, the, the uh, leather, and the beading is screwed or riveted to the top of the door. And then the D-roll is glued onto the top of the tack strip. And then the leather is stretched over tightly and tacked to the inside of the door. This is the left-hand side door. And I have custom made this strip of uh, Baltic birch plywood. And the grain is running this way to give me maximum flexibility to uh, bend it across this contour on the edge here and here and I've taped it in place and I'm just now putting in the uh, number six uh, flathead screws putting them every three inches apart to hold this in place I'm leaving three inches or two and a half inches rather at the edge here to be able to lift this up to tuck under the uh, the, uh, the leather as I cover this later on. The same on this side here. This edge of the wood, the plywood, follows the contour of the door very carefully on both inside and outside so that I get a, a nice smooth transition once I put the, uh, the leather in place here. I'll be doing this for the entire entire car at some point. Here, as you see, I've marked where the existing uh, holes were to secure the uh, original Baltic birch plywood strip that was here. I'm not trying to hit those when I drill the holes. I'm going to try to miss them. So I'll be drilling right beside them. It would be just about impossible to hit those holes, drawing blind, drilling blind rather. So I'm just going to try to miss them. And also, I'm going to miss these uh, countersunk rivets that I have here, which holds this. Uh, that tack strip there in place, which is of course steel with this uh, plywood riveted to it. Underneath this is um, a tack strip that is about five eighths of an inch thick, also made out of plywood. These are the crash roll tack strips in place with the number six flathead screws. This is 8th inch thick, aka 3 millimeter Baltic birch custom cut to fit precisely on this uh, on these flanges. There's gap between each each piece. Next step is to remove the uh, M1 at a time. Put the leather on them. Put them back. Put the D-roll on. Glue it, 
and pull the uh, leather over and tack it to the inside. This is the beginning of the left hand side crash roll construction. As you see I've taken this piece of leather and I've stretched it on this uh, work table, stapled it down. You need to stretch it because there's a curvature that the leather is going to have to follow. And if you don't stretch the leather at a time, it'll, uh, it'll wrinkle and the wrinkles are hard to get out. This is the, uh, the D-roll with the linen cover glued on as it was originally. And it's trimmed to fit precisely on the door over here, right here. Here we go. So it fits in there. It'll be glued to the top of the uh, tack strip once the tack strip is screwed back in place on top of the door. So what I've done here is I have uh, of laid out the tack strip and I've put some contact cement on the leather as well as the tack strip and I'm waiting for 15 or 20 minutes for it to set up. And then I'll be pushing or pulling over the, the lip, putting in tacks where I need to do, and then uh, stapling on this, uh, this bead roll here. This is the left hand side door coming together. I've got the uh, D roll clamped in place here. And I've, uh, I've used JB Weld, regular JB Weld, as my adhesive. It sets up over uh, several hours, so it gives you time to adjust to get this. Uh, get the D-roll here positioned just perfectly. All across. And tomorrow I'll be stretching that over and completing it. So once I have this uh, door finished, I'll learn from any mistakes that I've made and I'll complete this door. coming along. So this is the left hand side crash roll finally in place. Came out nice and smooth. Looks right there. It is uh, stapled down, stretched over as you staple it down to the tax strip on the door. And then I've uh, used contact cement as well to glue it down. Uh, the leather is doubled over right there. So what I've done is I drilled through and I put a rivet in there on both ends to give it an extra anchorage point of the end. Eighth of an inch shy from the D-roll, quarter inch shy from the tack strip. Over here I've got the right hand side door prepped for gluing on the, the D-roll that you see here as well as evident that I've pre-stretched it to eliminate any, any, any issue of creeping. Here I am getting ready to glue the D-roll onto the passenger side door. As you see it's been covered in the linen. I've uh, wiped it down with lacquer thinner to remove any release agent that might have been on the, uh, the mold when this rubber was made then scuffed it up with a little bit of sandpaper. You want lots of lots of tooth there for adhesion. As you see I've got the uh, leather taped back to expose the, the tack strip and I'm going to be gluing this directly on the edge, lining up the edge of the D-roll with the edge of the tack strip. And I'll be uh, gluing the ends so that they're overhanging the tack strip by an eighth of an inch and clearing the end of the uh, the door by an eighth of an inch as well on both sides. So that's the next step. I'm going to be using uh, high strength epoxy. In this case the regular JB weld and I'll clamp it in place and let it sit overnight and then do the complete job tomorrow. And this is the uh, D-roll on the uh, right hand side door. Clamped down and uh, epoxied to the top of the tack strip, which of course is screwed into the top of the door. 
you should uh, resist any temptation to use a fast setting epoxy in this operation. This took me 20 minutes to get this to a position where I wanted it. It's sometimes difficult to uh, to get the D-roll flush against the the top of the tack strip. You see what I've done here with the uh, piece of plywood acting like a spring, pressing down this this part here. The moment here pushes this D-roll down flush against the tack strip. And I've used uh, needle nose vice grips to position it on either end. And here I have my eighth inch clearance from the end. And the D-roll edge is precisely against the edge of the tack strip here. The thing you want to do is uh, make sure you scrape off any squeeze out here of epoxy before you let it sit. Because you don't want any bump in there. You want that to be a nice smooth transaction. Shot of the inside of the door to show the clamping arrangement. The view from the inside of the door. You see I've used this uh, side curtain mount to uh, secure a piece of hardwood here. Press up against the D-roll to keep it in position. And it's shimmed in place here to get it just right. That's to align it with the tack strip. Then of course this uh, little rig here presses down on the D-roll to make sure it's flush with the tack strip. And here's the right side door completed. Nicely done. So the next step is to do the dash crash roll. See I've got the piece cut to length and covered in linen per original. I had to take the rear wing off over here because the uh, because this seal was too tight and I wasn't getting good closure so I had to do that here before I uh, could continue. I had this door sticking out a good eighth of an inch. It's flush now. Restored the gap here. And here the tack strip for the dash crash wall is in place. And the uh, leather is taped away so I can see this, this edge clearly. I need to align the D-roll precisely on that edge as I glue it. At this point I have the uh, two doors done. And this is the D-roll very securely clamped in place over the dash. And there's the D-roll with the clamps off. This is kind of the gap I was looking for here. And over here, there's the gap there. You can see I got a slight elevation issue here, but that will come up. There's a bit of a gap right there. It will come up square. A little bit of bit up. So now that's ready to lower the uh, the leather on and staple it to the back. So the job is three quarters done, at least the number of pieces. This is the front crash floor in place. Looking good. I aim to get a little bit of gap in there, and that's what I got. I'm doing the same here. This is the uh, the D-roll for the tonneau crash roll. Clamped in place. You need lots of clamps because this stuff does not want to stay in place. It's a little rigid. So this is the test fit. I've left a quarter of an inch here. 
It's best to leave maybe a little bit more. You can always trim it off later after you've got it glued in place. You can also add to it too, but it's easier just to trim it off. So there it is. Ready to be uh, covered in linen. And then uh, the uh, leather attached to it. To the tax strip. And here we're getting ready to uh, install the D-roll. The leather is uh, pulled back to expose the, the tack strip. This puts an awful lot of strain on the outside edge of this leather. Stretches it up quite a bit, but it's going to be trimmed off anyway. So there's no damage done. This you pretty much have to do to get perfect access to that uh, tack strip for gluing. What I'm going to do here is uh, mount the D-roll uh, without adhesive and then glue one side at a time. This is the linen covered D-roll, dry fitted in place. This side is fairly well secured where I need it to be, right up at the edge of the tack strip. That side is secured more loosely because I'm going to be taking those clamps off and gluing that half of the uh, D-roll first and then moving on to this side once that one's uh, in place and position. And there's the Tano Crash Roll D-roll cemented in place clamped. There are 13 13 clamps needed <laughs> to get this thing to stay put. This is the stuff I used. This is JB Weld. It takes uh, it takes a couple of hours to start the setup, which is really what you need. I took at least half an hour getting this thing positioned in place and uh, making sure that the, the edge of the D-roll is up against the edge of the plywood tax strip under there. It's a little hard to see there because it's really tight, but I've got it lined up with the, uh, the door crash roll kind of important to do the doors first and you uh, you do the dash crash roll custom fit to get a nice fit like that and then do the uh, tonneau crash roll. So now I let it have to let it sit for 15 hours or so which will be tomorrow and then I'll complete the uh, you know, stretching the leather over it and finishing the crash roll in this cockpit. But it's looking pretty good. We're in the last stage of the crash roll installation. And I've just taken off the uh, clamps holding this uh, D-roll in place. Cemented very securely. Now I've got my quarter inch gap here between these two D-roll pieces which will uh, give me a nice tight fit not too tight but these uh, finishing chrome pieces will be just touching I hope or just slightly gapped the other side is is, is the same way got my quarter inch gap there so the step now is to uh, take this leather and bring it over. I'm going to have to get some wrinkles out for sure. It's going to be a bit of a challenge, but we'll get it done. And there's the gap on the right side. Quarter wrench or so. Pull the leather across. And we've got a few things we're going to have to do here to get this wrinkle free. It's the beauty of leather. It stretches like crazy. Get that pretty tight. Which is just what we're after. But you really have to make sure that D roll is secured really well. And that's why I use JB Weld in there. I did a test on a piece of this D-roll on the, uh, the Baltic Burst before I committed to using the JB Weld and it uh, worked out very well. 
These are the final stages of the, the final piece to go in. And you can see it's, uh, it's quite taut there. So what I'm going to need to do is make slits, strategic slits, down the leather. Not too far up, obviously, because you want it to, uh, to be covered up. But that's the next step. And then I'll be uh, the final stage with finishing off the ends. This whole middle section is now stapled in place from behind using this pneumatic stapler. It's pretty much essential. You can get away with an ordinary stapler, but this is much faster and much more accurate. You see it's been the stretched tight to give a nice smooth finish to this Connolly leather. So onwards and I get this thing done. So here's the uh, the end coming together. You see where it's stapled on the inside here. Finishing up the end is a bit of a bit of an art form, I guess. You have to uh, trim the the piping so the end of this piping ends at the wrap around here. So it goes right across. But you also need to remove a piece of the vinyl here to get it out of the way so that it doesn't uh, cause this to stick out too proudly when you wrap it around the, the edge. So here I'm going to have to trim this down take off a fair chunk of this to leave just enough to tuck underneath from the bottom and then uh, drive in the chrome plug here so we get a nice clean finish. So now we're getting ready to uh, finish off this end. You see how that's been trimmed off with the piping and the piping ends right there where it should. I've already taken this little piece here. There's about five eighths of an inch a lot left here and a little tab at the bottom so that tucks in like that and then there's a little bit of trimming done on the leather to tuck it in before driving in the plug and the final step is uh, doing that and here we here we have the the end trimmed it's been tucked under here and uh, the tab has been stapled down to the tack strip. I'll trim off this extra piece of leather. So we're going to tuck that in. Pull this in like that. So you get a nice clean finish. And then we'll, uh, we'll tuck in this leather. We'll make a couple of slits going down right there on both sides so it tucks right in. And there are the final cuts. So tabs tuck in like this. That tucks in there. And here's the uh, the tail of the, the piping stapled in place and secured. Next is to drive in this, uh, this finishing chrome plug. This is an original one I have re-chromed. And you'll notice that there's a there's a cut right there. It's a piece cut out. And that's to allow for curvatures. This will go in like this here. With the, uh, the cut facing downwards to allow for the, uh, for the curvature of the, of the D-roll. And there's the chrome piece started. We use, use this dead blow hammer just to tap it in place. There it is. Not very and there's the final result. Still haven't trimmed those off yet. This again is the final product. It's easily the most challenging and difficult trimming jobs for XK120 and XK140 roadsters. But if you take your time, use the right materials, and the right tools, it'll come out just fine.